Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the truth about Solana. Let's get right into it. Solana is an open source public blockchain that enables smart contracts, non-fungible tokens, NFTs, and a range of decentralized applications. The SOL currency, which is native to Solana's blockchain, provides network security, as well as a mechanism for transferring value through staking. Anatoly Yakovenko and current Solana board member and chief operations officer Raj Gokal founded Solana in 2017. Yakovenko, who is now the CEO of Solana Lab, has a background in system architecture and wanted to apply his skills to a new blockchain paradigm that would allow for quicker processing rates. The founders wanted to construct a completely new blockchain that could be used globally. At the time, blockchain transaction rates were limited to around 15 transactions per second, which paled in comparison to Visa and MasterCard's 65,000 transactions per second throughput. Yakovenko and Gokal wanted to create a new blockchain that could handle worldwide demand. Because of its speed and low transaction prices, Solana presently has a theoretical peak capacity of 65,000 transactions per second and has become one of the most widely utilized blockchains today. Solana, like practically any other blockchain system today, is still in its early stages and is not without criticism. Solana is based on a hybrid protocol that combines Proof of Stake POS, and a concept called Proof of History POH. Proof of Stake is a mechanism that allows a blockchain to keep accurate data across all of its users. Owners of cryptocurrencies commit or stake their coins to a validator under Proof of Stake. A validator is a computer that has its own copy of the blockchain and runs the blockchain software. In a Proof of Work blockchain like Bitcoins, these validators are the equivalent of miners. Validators are chosen to add the next block of transactions based on how great their stake is, how many coins they have pledged to the network, how long they have staked for, and a number of other criteria, rather than competing with other companies to solve complicated puzzles as in proof of work. The goal is to determine the amount of commitment among network participants and to reward them for it. The network becomes more decentralized and safe as the stake grows in relation to circulating supply. In the method, consensus is formed among the nodes, Solana differs from other blockchains. While proof of history has its advantages, some people are concerned about Solana's voting process and if it leads to centralization. In Solana, nodes must vote on the legality of blocks and transactions before they may join the chain. Nodes communicate their votes to the leader, who is then in charge of collecting the votes and signing off on the block. Validators are chosen through proof of stake on a standard blockchain. They then generate the next block of transactions and disseminate it to the rest of the network's nodes. The rest of the network then compares the new block to their own ledger version. The ledger and the new block are then checked by each node against all other nodes in the network. From here, nodes can decide whether or not to accept this new block as valid. The process continues until a majority of nodes agree on a single new chain version. While time-consuming, allowing nodes to reach an agreement without the need for an intermediary to count votes has been at the heart of decentralized blockchains since the inception of Bitcoin. Solana has attracted criticism for a variety of reasons. Despite its rapid growth in popularity because of its low-cost transactions, as crypto consumers seek speedier and cheaper platforms outside of Ethereum. Solana was accused of lying about the total circulating token supply and creating millions of additional tokens in November 2021. Justin Bonds, the founder and chief investment officer of crypto fund management Cyber Capital, sent a series of tweets criticizing Solana for a long sequence of lies, fraud, and deception by Sol. In the tweet, he claimed that Solana's team initially stated that Sol's circulating supply was just 8.2 million tokens, but that they had, without notifying the community, loaned an additional 13 million tokens to a market maker. In response to the allegations, Solana's founder, Anatoly Yakovenko, wrote a Medium post to explain the additional coins. Yakovenko said that the tokens were provided to a market maker in order to provide liquidity in the aftermarket. Yakovenko wrote, The Solana Foundation agreed to lend the market maker 11,365,067 tokens for a period of six months. The problem? We did not disclose this information to the public, as well as the size and nature of the loan, during the CoinList auction and subsequent Binance listing. While the goal of the coins appeared to be legitimate, many members of the community were concerned about the lack of transparency and the Foundation's propensity to release an excess of tokens into the market, which may have disastrous consequences for SOL investors. As a result, instead of dispersing tokens and propagating the network, stakers and validators aim to stockpile tokens under fewer validators in order to win more blocks. 
Because small validators receive small payouts in comparison to the fees paid for a server and voting expenditures, this procedure presents a high barrier for entry for becoming a Solana node. While this is true, until a blockchain reaches a particular degree of maturity, it is virtually always centralized to some extent. Solana is a new blockchain that has the potential to grow much more decentralized over time. That's it for today. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you never miss out on any future content we'll produce for you guys. We're signing off now, but we'll be sure to catch you all in the next one.